Okay, so it's been a few months since I got my mini mill, and I've really been enjoying getting to use this thing. My only complaint is that the gears are still louder than I want them to be, and I'm afraid I just can't let that stand. Alright, so we need a belt drive for this thing, and because I live in Canada, there isn't a great way for me to get one without having to ship it from out of country, and that gets expensive quick. So, as a tradition, let's make one ourselves, and I kind of have an interesting idea in mind. I've said before that one of my favorite tools is my 3D printer. These things are cheap, easy to use, and, most importantly, it can make parts for me while I go do other, more important things. And I figure it's not like we're going to be applying massive loads to the motor mount, so let's try to 3D print ourselves a belt drive upgrade. As I was thinking about taking some measurements that I'd need, I had the idea to check online to see if someone has already made a CAD model of a belt drive upgrade already. And lo and behold, I found this design by Tony CS Tech, which is awesome. Unexpectedly not having to do work is probably one of my favorite things. I 3D printed the main body and motor mount with 10 layers on the top, bottom, and walls, and it feels reasonably solid. Before we get to mounting this on the mill though, there is a small bit of design work that we're going to have to do. The sewing machine belt that I got is slightly different than the belt that Tony used for his pulley design. And I don't have any set screws to connect the spindle pulley to the spindle shaft. So I'm going to do a quick redesign of them and adjust how they're connected to the spindle. Everything was going really smoothly until the pulleys were done being printed. So here's the problem. The support material in the v-grooves of these pulleys is proving really difficult to remove, and there's no way we're going to be running a belt through any of this mess. I was really annoyed by this, and tried a few different tools to see if they'd work any better, and at the end I even considered the idea of getting a bigger, fancier 3D printer that can print multiple filaments, but I realized the solution to my problem was staring me right in the face. Are these 3D printed pulleys, or are they very close to dimension chunks of plastic lathe stock? And luckily, I recently picked up this four-jaw chuck that I can use to dial the pulley in. But I'm not going to show too much of that process because I currently suck at doing it. So let's skip to the machining part, shall we? It's been a while since I've cut plastic on the mini lathe, but it is always extremely satisfying to do. I cleared out the center channel using just a parting blade, but I struggled to find the best way to cut the V section of the pulleys. I thought I would try to grind a high-speed steel tool to match the profile, but that wound up being a lot more trouble than it was worth. I settled on setting the compound slide to the angle I needed, and used that to cut the profile in. This is definitely the preferred way to do this, and it wound up working really well. It also provides the added advantage of letting me make the pulleys out of aluminum at some point down the road if and when these plastic ones don't work out. I always hate taking apart tools because the second I do, I always realize there's some part that I was planning on making that can't be done until everything is reassembled. But in this case, I suppose there isn't really much of a choice. At least one cool thing about disassembling tools is you get to see how they're assembled. Like how this pinion gear is pressed on with what feels like 20 tons of force. I will never go without one of these cheap $7 gear pullers again. I genuinely think I've needed it for every single project I've done since I got it. Doing a quick dry fit of the parts, things seem to line up correctly. And now that we've validated that, I can cut down the motor mounting adjustment bolts and we should be able to put everything together and get some test cuts made. Fortunately, assembly is a pretty simple process. The only building step remaining was to mark and drill the hole for the spindle lock in the spindle poly. After that, it was just a matter of getting the belt and spindle nut on. Okay, slight oversight with my redesign of these pulleys. The motor mount now interferes with the spindle nut, and that means we can't loosen off this belt enough to get it over the low speed pulley. I think what we're going to do is cut this section of the motor mount off, but for now let's run this in high speed mode and see if it actually works. Alright folks, place your bets. Good news is, this is already way quieter. Bad news is, that rubbing sound does not sound good. Well, there's your problem. It looks like I should have machined the spindle mounting interface when I had this thing mounted on the lathe. So I had a really good idea to fix the coaxiality issue and tried to JB weld an insert into the center that we could then machine away. But when I hit it with the boring bar, this happened. For now, we'll ignore the lack of coaxiality with the pulleys and just add in some clearance on the bottom. And while it's disassembled, we'll get the motor mount modified to let us use the low speed option. 
I think that means it's finally time for us to do some testing, and I have the perfect thing in mind. I just got a collet chuck for the lathe, but for some reason it didn't come with any holes in the side to use a bar to lock it in place while tightening up the collets. Feel free to correct me if this is normal, but my lathe doesn't have a spindle lock, so I'm gonna have to add something. Anyway, not going too far down that particular rabbit hole, drilling in these holes should give us a decent enough amount of loading on the mill to see if the belt is gonna slip while we're trying to get stuff done. So then, let's get to it. Coincidentally, this is another great use of the 3D printer. To keep everything perfectly balanced as all things should be, we'll need to drill three holes equally spaced apart around the circumference. This is one of those weird things that seems like it should be easy to measure, but is actually a bit of a pain. I decided to sidestep the problem entirely, and I printed up this template and used that to mark the spots to drill. Here's another tip. This copper conductive tape stuff works phenomenally to make a temporary set of soft jaws for a setup. On that note, I know this is awful and will probably shift, but... I don't know, I've got nothing. I'm just sorry about this one, folks. Starting off our actual drilling operation, it seems to be handling the center drill pretty well. Let's switch to the pilot bit, which should put a bit more load on the spindle. Okay, good news so far. This also seems to be working extremely well. Though success is not a very interesting result, so I guess it's time to switch to the 5 16th inch bit. Ah, okay, there we go. Something is finally happening. That is definitely not working nearly as well. The belt seems to be slipping on the pulley if I put any kind of force behind the drill. I figure one of two things is happening here. Either I'm pushing the mill too hard, or the belt isn't tensioned enough. I think it'll actually be pretty easy to take care of both of these issues at once. I increased the belt tension and switched to a larger pilot bit, and this wound up working a whole lot better. Though there still was the occasional slip, which could be an indication that I am pushing the mill a little bit too hard still. On the bright side, we were able to get all of the holes that we needed to drill, drilled, and so I will call that a win. I figured we should also try to do a little bit of milling, partially for testing's sake, but also because I find the footage of chips flying to be very satisfying. Probably no surprises here given the much lower cutting load, but the belt didn't slip at all and handled the milling operations beautifully. Despite the minor hiccups, this did end up working pretty well, and it is much quieter than before, so mission accomplished. Truthfully, it might actually be a good thing that the belt is slipping when I'm being too aggressive. It should prevent me damaging anything important or overloading the motor while taking a slightly too optimistic cut. With that said, I think if I started this project again, I would try a toothed poly design and see if that works any better. But I think that's going to be a project for another day. Anyway, that's all I got for now. As always, thank you folks for watching, and I'll see you next time.